person Blow a lot of bases for copy nation New delegation, this the liberation of copy nation New federation, always outdated Brothers said we made it And I'm faded And I'm on the move, I can never be complacent So now, nah, integrated to Jason True sense of Luke, baby girl, let's just face it Elevated mindset, total concentration SS, level, let leave you need to sweet. Like one, two, three, and then twa. Please don't get it twisted, boy. I got it unlocked. Never track, always blessing. I ball like a prime that's been in too long. We too strong. We too on what we own. We don't need to know. Not everybody needs to know what they need to know. Next level for sure. That's all I can say. Y'all King Kevin in the building, baby. Y'all write books and films. I'm here in Atlanta. I also renovate houses. But the reason why I'm up here today is to represent Haiti. For those who don't know, and I know we're just Juneteenth, but those who don't know, Haiti is the first independent black republic in the world. The first and only country to fight the oppressors, to fight the slave masters and gain independence. You don't learn about this in school because they've been sweeping it under the rug so that you guys will get empowered. Back in the day, what they did is, around 1804, they put a black ball history on Haiti. They didn't want the enslaved Africans in America to know about what the Haitians did in the island, which would be the French, the British, and the Spanish, including with the support of America. George Washington, the first, and Thomas Jefferson, the third, the first and third president of America, donated over $250,000 each to help support France to be hated, but guess what? They lost. How many of you guys watch boxing? Who's your favorite boxer? My Mayweather? You got Mike Tyson, Vanna Holyfield, et cetera, et cetera. All right, check it. You Mayweather, right? Sorry, I'm fat. You Mayweather, I guess you could call me, uh, I don't know, Vanna Holyfield. But if I beat you, what that makes me? Hey, you the champion. If I beat you, what that makes me? Now check it. Two, General Tussaud Lovinger, the greatest hero of all time. White, black, yellow, whatever. Don't just, don't just go by my words. Marcus Garvey said that. I know y'all know who Marcus Garvey is. General Tussaud Lovinger of the Haitian Revolution. He said that he's the greatest hero of all time. Greater than George Washington, greater than Cromwell, and Napoleon Bonaparte. But you don't hear about that in the school books because he was black and he was Haitian. But I'm here today to let y'all know that we are a great people. Not because I'm Haitian or you African American or Jamaican. We are black, one love. One God, one love, one destiny. Now let me, let me say this. I have a book coming out called America's and France's A Thousand Year War Against Haiti. Assassination of a Nation. Let me say it again. America's and France's one thousand year war against Haiti, assassination of a nation. You go to my website, kevindorver.com. I'm on tour right now, the Black Lexi tour. We started in Chicago, and now I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm getting ready to go to Ghana and Jamaica. So please check me out, support the movement. We do have a GoFundMe because what we want to do right now, which is the reason why I'm here, is that we are lobbying in Washington D.C. We're gonna have about a hundred thousand people protesting in Washington next year. Go to my website, kevindorver.com. Support, there's a petition as well. If you want to donate, please donate because the mission is not free. All right, the revolution will not be televised. Bless up. Thank you. KevinDover.com. Peace, King. Peace. Bless up to all the fathers in the building. Give yourself a round of applause. Happy Juneteenth weekend. The match is supposed to be at an event right now. Speaking at the Juneteenth event down there at the uh, Olympic Park. What time? 1.45. Okay. Yeah. And, um, but the reason why I got the sword is because this sword is actually from the Union. Uh, the, the Union versus Confederates. This is an actual real sword from the Civil War. A uh, long story how I got this. Um, uh, years ago, not years ago, but uh, a couple weeks ago, a client of mine said, told me that he was, a, he was a former gangster. He was trying to intimidate me. I told him, look, man, I ain't never been a gangster, but I've always been a warrior. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I understand my ancestry. I'm Haitian, Afro-Haitian, born and raised Fort Lauderdale. And uh, as a matter of fact, that's why I'm speaking at the event, because 
Abraham Lincoln recognized Haiti in 1861. Haiti was freed 1804, so he didn't recognize Haiti until about 60 years later. Why is that? I believe he did that so that he could, uh, you know, the South really didn't like Haiti because Haiti represented the first independent black republic in the world. Right. The first and only country ever, the yes. first and only country ever that was created from people that were enslaved, yes. fought for oppression, yeah. which was France. They beat France, Britain, and Spain. Yeah. Also, the US was, was sponsoring France. Let's hold up the story. But anyway, they overcame overwhelming odds. It was a mission impossible. That's right. Mission impossible for, for a small African country or African population to beat hundreds of thousands of white supremacists, you know, believers. Now, you gotta read my book. No more about that. I wrote four books. My next book is called uh, uh, France. No, I'm sorry. France and America's a thousand year war against Haiti, assassination of the nation. So it's going to be very, uh, you know, big and uh, it's going to be on the news. I'm going to be on CNN, Fox News, and all that good stuff. I'm speaking to existence. Now, present terms. Keyword for today is position. This is where I want to leave you guys with today. Position. I just came back from Miami last Monday. Because my nephew, who was a you know big football player in Fort Lauderdale, he graduated. Shout out to Dave. Uh, we was at dinner after the graduation, and I caught a, caught a flight out there with me and my daughter. And there was a stool that my daughter was sitting right here. I got two girls, by the way, two precious babies. Uh, so there was a stool right here, and then my chair right here at the end of the table. Now, the the uh, waiter put like a uh, I think you call it a. Uh, you got a high chair, and the stool goes on top of the high chair. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. Booster right. seat. Booster seat. Booster seat. Correct. Mm -hmm. So he, he put the booster seat on the stool, and of course I'm watching it because the, the booster seat didn't have no seat belt or nothing like that. So she literally falls out the chair. Now she's only two years old. She'll be two years, two years old August the 12th. So she literally fell out the chair, and I jumped up so quick to grab her. And I caught her, she was maybe a foot from the ground. If she would've hit that floor, it'd have been head first, her head would've been busted. Had it not been in position, yes, sir. that mm -hmm. dinner would've been over, and our, our trip would've been over, she would've been in the hospital. So I still get nervous about it today, but being a father, and I was in position to do something, to prevent tragedy. So what I want you guys to keep in mind is, whether you're a father or you're a friend, be in position to do, you know, to do what needs to be done. Whatever you, like in driving, I was taught when I was learning how to drive, whatever you think the next driver's gonna do, they're gonna do it. So I learned how to avoid accidents. So if you think someone's gonna turn in your lane, you know what I'm saying, you kind of move out the way. So you gotta be in position, do what needs to be done. Don't wait for the accident to happen. If you think it's gonna happen, take proper steps to prevent traffic. Anyway, my name is King Kevin Dorval. My website is kevindorval.com. I'm a future multi-millionaire. And actually, I just bought my first property a month ago. Hey, bless all of y'all. It's King Kevin in the building. Uh, today is June 19th, Juneteenth, the official Juneteenth day, you know, back in uh, 1865 when the actual Juneteenth actually began, you know, the, the freedom of African Americans here um, in the States, or well, African Americans, obviously in the States. <laughs> Um, however, what I wanted to just, you know, clarify, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos that you shared. Those videos were actually both done Saturday, uh, June 17th here in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where I am. Actually, I'm wearing my company shirt, you know, Sky King Air Services, mold and water damage specialist. Uh, we also do full renovations. And even I didn't do, I didn't do any work today other than being a father and take care of my two baby girls. But what I did do today was pick up a check, you know, pretty large check for a new client. Um, word of mouth is getting around, so I'm very happy about that. And what what I liked about this this client, and he stressed out that he wanted to make sure, you know what I'm saying, that the workers, um, that my workers, you know, this, this is, you know, it's not gonna be a bunch of white folks and Hispanics doing the job that I'm gonna be there and make sure that, that you know, that I have you know, black workers with me as well. You know, I can have other cultures, but just don't let it be a, a whole nother group of race there. Cause it's a black owned business, a very respectable business. And, you know, I'll share with that client is some other time. And, and, but what I wanted to really show you guys uh, as well, 
Um, Juneteenth, you know, it's some mixed feelings about Juneteenth. I've been celebrating Juneteenth since uh, 2012, 2013, when Mrs. Wanda, uh, Wanda Walker, uh, rest in peace. Uh, Mrs. Walker was such a beautiful lady, um, very kind spirit. And I remember when I first met her, was so that I can speak and give a presentation on black authors. Cause when she found out, first of all, Ms. Walker would give me a time of day to talk to her cause she was so busy, you know, being a wife and the manager of this uh, library in Pompano called Apollo Park, legendary park in Pompano. I have so many good memories. Uh, so many good memories since a little kid going to that library in that park. Um, always a good vibe. They always, always, always wanted to help and, and support, you know, the local artists, you know, whether you were, you know, a painter, your author, orator, uh, whether you were, you know, some sort of um, a chess coach, you know, I almost brought my chess program there, our chess program there, Courage to Leave International. Um, even though I am Afro-Haitian, uh, most of my friends, my circle, what I grew up, grew up around was mainly African-Americans. Uh, half my girlfriends, African, half, you know, African-Americans, if they weren't Haitian or Jamaican, um, that, Cause that's the community you know I was in. Matter of fact, the community that I moved out of before I moved to Atlanta, it was mainly a Jamaican community. Because, you know, commissioners, police officers, uh, the stores, the Jamaican run. Um, so, so I have a very you know diverse um, background um, when it comes to working with people. But I like the fact that this this business owner said that you know because we don't support each other enough. And Juneteenth is is being mocked. Um, I think personally by the by the presidency, you know what I'm saying, especially now with Joe Biden, you know, uh, did you see how they did that uh, you know, gay pride month, they had the flag the flag in the middle middle between two big US flags and they have the, the proud you know, the LGBT flag in the middle. Uh, I don't have an issue in the LGBT community, um, at all, to be honest. But it just uh, bothers me how they kind of like you know you know make light of uh, of, of how they trying to implement Juneteenth with the uh, proud proud month is that what it is proud month proud flag month whatever uh, this that particular holiday for the uh, gay lesbian community is and they had uh, a couple of transgenders bare breasts on their breasts there's kids there. Uh, the transgenders doing that. I mean, it, it was disgusting. They actually did, you know, the White House banned them for coming back to the White House uh, for good reason. Um, but I want you guys to understand how many people died, how many black folks died um, in the Civil War. You know, how many black folks was in the Civil War. They say that close to 180,000 um, black men were fighting in that war. I'm sure there's some women in, you know, that was fighting as well, just disguised themselves to be men, you know, so they can make some money for one. And um, they love to fight, you know, but it was almost 200,000. But at the same time in Texas, there was over, over a quarter million African-Americans still enslaved at the time, you know, because Abraham Lincoln signed an Emancipation Proclamation uh, 1863, went to 1865 until the people found out in Texas. Uh, Galveston tested, if I'm not mis mistaken, by the, um, the the army soldier Granger who made made the announcement uh, to the last bit of enslaved Africans, not slaves, enslaved. Don't ever don't ever talk to me and call our ancestors slaves. They were enslaved. They were people that were enslaved. They were forced into free labor. And so the the Texas people in Texas, you know, they didn't want to let go to free labor. Hey, we're making millions of dollars here, you know, getting all the free tobacco and, and cotton. And uh, we don't, we don't, if we didn't got to pay them, why pay them? You know, they never property anyway. And that's the mentality they had. Um, Juneteenth, as you, as you can see from the videos that I was speaking on behalf of Haiti. You know, Haiti being the first independent black nation in the Western Hemisphere. And um, what I didn't clearly state um, at the Juneteenth event was that the reason why we are marching on Washington, why are we going to lobby in Capitol Hill, is to change the rice policies, the agricultural trading policies that the U.S. have with Haiti. Um, it's biased. It doesn't favor Haiti at all. As a matter of fact, um, it's crippling Haiti even more because a country that was built on farming, get this, y'all, a country that was built on farming 
built on agriculture, still thrives on agriculture. This, you know, it's, they eat from the land. They eat from the mangoes, the uh, sugar cane, the you know what I'm saying, the rice and the beans and all that good stuff. That we eat from the land in Haiti. You know what I'm saying? That's how we eat. But thanks to Bill Clinton, and I didn't have time to explain all, all of this um, at the Juneteenth event. My time's cut down for 15 minutes to, to literally five minutes. I think I was on stage for like three and a half minutes. Um, but, you know, it's all good. I got a chance to go out there, you know, do my thing and woo-woo. But that just, that's just a small piece of the puzzle. The Black Legacy Tour, Stop the War in Haiti, will continue to move on. Um, but in Haiti, the coalition, the link between Haiti and Juneteenth, See, Abraham Lincoln recognized Haiti in 1861. Ask me, why did it take him nearly 60 years to recognize Haiti? You know, all those years, all those presidents from George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, all with Abraham Lincoln, um, you know, they choose to turn their backs on Haiti. Even though they were doing business with Haiti, they didn't want to publicly recognize Haiti because they wanted to make friends with France and they were working on the Louisiana Purchase so they could purchase the land. America would not be the size it is today if it was not for Haiti beating France. Louisiana Purchase is not just Louisiana, y'all. <laughs> it's like 15 states. Wyoming, Colorado, North Dakota, South Dakota, parts of, of um, Texas, and Canada. Um, you know, what other states? I'm sure I'm forgetting a, a couple other states. But you're talking about, including Louisiana, you're talking about 15 states. So there was a great westward expansion of America. America would not be half the size that it is today if it had not been for the Haitian and the Haitian Revolution beating France, Britain, and Spain. On top of that, in 1779, there's roughly about 600 freed black men from Haiti, free Haitian soldiers who came to fight in Savannah to fight the British on behalf of America to gain its independence before it became America. When it was just, you know, part of the whole um, British Empire. Think about those things. Juneteenth is a lot more than just dancing around and enjoying a, a weekend of fun and festivities, which we needed. But they know black folks, all we like to do, <laughs> not all we like to do, but we love to get her, jump up and get around and dance and wear nice clothes and party and drink and festivities. Did you know during the slaves during the slave trade during those times, you know, 18th, 19th century, that if you <laughs> on a weekend, if you were not partying and getting drunk and you trying to save your money, you either get whipped or forced to buy liquor to, to get drunk and dance and party. They didn't want us thinking, they didn't want us in our, our clear minds. They didn't want they didn't want that. You know what I mean? And all the people that died in the Civil War. And I'm going to show you guys a, a sword from the Civil War. See this sword right here? This is the actual sword from the from the Union. It's a real sword here. I'm not even playing. This is a real sword from... Uh, this. They say that this sword is dated 1861. I have to, you know, get it appraised. Um, but it's actually... The antique special told me this is a real sword, but I need to do some authentication to find out how valuable it is, but all the detail is there in the sword. Um, the South was fighting to death. They wanted to kill us. They didn't want us. They wanted, they, they would rather die than to free us. They would rather die. They would rather die. You can't, can't, can't. They'd rather die to keep us in bondage than to free us. And, 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 and that really, that really troubles me quite a bit because if they were if they were willing to die to create this flag here, you know these you know fifty stars and a red, white, and blue. This is a it's actually a humongous, uh, large folded U.S. flag here, um, just for prop purposes. You know what I mean? Um, like I said, many of my friends and, and ex girlfriends and associates, you know, African American. But these people will rather die than to give us freedom. So we sitting here in twenty twenty three, still partying and dancing. But when freedom, supposed to be Freedom Day, meaning freedom for everybody, freedom all over the world, all over the, the African diaspora. But in Haiti today, Haiti is not free, y'all. Haiti is back in bondage. From 1915 to 1934, when the U.S. decided to invade Haiti, first they invaded the bank and robbed the bank, no, no mask, 
this guns, this guns in a big wooden crate is still five hundred thousand. Um, five hundred thousand dollars worth of gold back then, nineteen forty. How much that gold worth today? Over twenty plus billion. Not billion, but million. Over twenty plus million dollars. Now, reparation wise, eighteen twenty five when they when they forced when they forced Haiti to pay one hundred and fifty million dollars in one hundred fifty gold francs to France. For their freedom and to be recognized. Now, mind you, we got our freedom since 1803. We declared it 1804. But just to recognize Haiti. So, because Haiti wanted to do business. We know we just can't survive amongst ourselves. We need to do international commerce. But France was like, no, nah, you're going to pay us $150 million for all the property we lost. Property meaning my people, this skin color. You guys going to pay us this money or we're going to go to war and we're going to kill all of y'all. That always happened. As a matter of fact, that's, that's, that's not it. They have put a hit out to wipe out every Haitian woman and man on that island. The extermination order. There's one in Namibia that was made by the Germans as well. That's one of the stories. Matter of fact, they actually got reparations, but they rejected it because the German government wanted to give them money and not their land back. These people are like, no, nah, we want our land back. And Haiti, we need to do the same thing. The United States, we need to do the same thing. You see, what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's a common cause, getting our land back. But back to Haiti, they crippled the economy, crippled the economy, forced Haiti to take these loans. So it was a double debt. First, we, we had to pay y'all 150 million gold francs, got reduced to 90 million. First, we got to pay y'all, took 122 years to pay that, to pay that debt. Not only that, we're going to, Take your loans at exorbitant rates. You know what I'm saying? So every three every three dollars Haiti made, for example, coffee, coffee beans, for example, the coffee tax. She says three dollars taxes on a pound of coffee beans. Every three dollars Haiti made, two dollars and fifty three cents went back to France. What, what kind of living is that? Fast forward. 1996, when Bill Clinton made Haiti sign that farm bill, well, they didn't make Haiti sign the farm bill, Congress signed the farm bill, but he forced President Jean Bertrand Aristide, the first democratic, democratically elected president, they forced him, they forced him to accept to reduce the tariffs. So tariffs are like taxes, taxes on imports. So it went from 50% to 35%. Today, 2023, 3%. That money is used to build schools, roads, hospitals. You know what I'm saying? Sanitary, security, police. That's what that money is used for. But guess what? <laughs> that money is not there. Because all our money has been siphoned to the United States, siphoned to France, siphoned to Canada, and God knows who, who else. Haiti is not Haiti today. Something must be changed. I spoke with a, a gentleman who's a, a, a diplomat up there in New York at the United Nations. He spoke for a good hour. Mind you, this is a gentleman that has been... <laughs> he didn't take me seriously until he got a phone with me and then someone gave him the word like, hey, this brother King Kevin Dorval, he's going to call you. Please listen to what he has to say. He's the real deal. You know what I'm saying? She told me just like that. Queen Mother called him and told him, He's been trying to reach reach out to you and catch you. He needs your support. You both Haitians. See what you guys can do together. And he has some great points that Haiti needs better government, better governance, and we need to help supply that. And I agree. But I also said that, yeah, Haiti does that has many problems. There's many things we could point at. Yeah, we're gonna pick this person to be the leader or this group to be the leader. I personally think it needs to be some kind of tri, not trilateral, but some sort of commissioned amongst three to five people different parts of Haiti and we come together and we make decisions together we get people that are dedicated to Haiti not for the money not for the uh you know what I'm saying uh publicity not for the PR uh not for the imagery none of that but straight for the people especially the kids especially the children especially the children and we can get that going then I'm all for it because that's what needs to be done um but the rice Agriculture. Haiti makes some of the best mangoes in the world and year round. Ask anybody who knows about mangoes. They're going to tell you them Haitian mangoes, it's it. It's fire. <laughs> like the uh, young girl in middle school told me, it's fire. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, got to have it. I, I ate 
I ate some mangoes in Haiti. And quick story, I have a three acre land in Haiti, right? My mom, my mom left us, you know, my siblings, um, in Haiti. And on that land, there's these mango trees, massive mango trees, massive, massive. And one of my cousins climbed this tree. And I was like, oh my God, this man climbed this tree. Look, look how high up in the sky he is climbing this tree. But he, but he, he knocked down a couple of mangoes. And one of the mangoes I ate, I never tasted a mango so juicy. Well, I can't say that. My grandma got some good mangoes in her yard in, in, in Pompano, Florida. But these man, I never tasted a mango that it felt like every bite I took, I was eating um, electricity. Like a bunch, it was filled with ele electrolytes or something, man. It, it, I can't explain it. It, it. It's like when I chewed it, it was so like it was so zingy all over my body. Like it felt like you know my whole body was just getting ready to like you know what I'm saying. Like uh, lightning was about to strike or something, man. It was, it was, it was magical. It was different. I'm like, man, what kind of mango is this? Why well, gotta taste this home? You know what I'm saying? Let's bag this up. Um, but you know, the land in Haiti, the agriculture, the business, Haiti must get back to growing its own food, and that's why we're doing the GoFundMe, Stop the War Against Haiti. That's why my website, KevinDoyle.com, we have the um the petition as well. There's a petition. To uh, you know, stop the war against Haiti. We're trying to get, not trying. We're gonna get a million, a million people to sign a petition. We're gonna march on Washington in May of 2024. We're gonna march on Washington. If I gotta march Washington, my my damn self, we doing it in the name of General Toussaint Louverture, Lieutenant Jean Jacques Dessalines, King Harry Christophe, Susan Belair, Mama Toussaint. You know what I'm saying? All these great mothers, foremothers, and forefathers of Haiti. We're doing it in recognition of them. So Juneteenth, just as the freedom for America, is for the African diaspora. Because the truth be told, you know, America was one of the last people to be freed from slavery. Haiti fought for their freedom. We didn't wait for our freedom papers. We didn't wait for no freedom papers. Oh, yeah, master, we want our freedom. Yeah, this is what the papers say. No, we went and took our freedom. You know what I'm saying? Coupe tête, boule kai, which means cut heads and burn houses. That was the decree of Lieutenant Jean Jacques Dessalines, who became Emperor Jean Jacques Dessalines, which I have a video by him. Um, do I have two? I may have two videos about uh, the Emperor. Very interesting person. They call him the Black Tiger. But they call me King Kevin Dorval, future multi millionaire. In the name of our ancestors, the Honorable Marcus Garvey, where he said that. You know, um, General Toussaint Louverture, his statesmanship, his um, political, you know what I'm saying, his, his political proudness, his intelligence, uh, his leadership, courageousness. There's no greater hero in the world, white, black, green, whatever, than General Toussaint Louverture. Because he beat British, he outplayed British, Spain, and America, and France. Napoleon Cromwell um, and George Washington. But they don't give him no shout outs. We must do that because they try to blackball the history in Haiti, but not on this watch. Because you know why? Because King Kevin is in the building. And we're going to do something about these kids starving in Haiti. We're going to change this part. I'm not saying I have all the answers. I'm, again, I'm not saying that. We have a, a formidable GoFundMe campaign to march on Washington and change these policies, particularly them this farm bill, um, to change these policies so that Haiti can feed itself he doesn't need these handouts that they giving us left and right. Tons of rice dumping it thanks to Bill Clinton. Dump all that subsidized white rice, bleached rice, giving the Haitians diabetes. They killed over a million pigs saying that the uh, the pigs from America is better, from Arkansas is better. You know what those pigs was? They call them the royal pigs because they, they had to eat fancy. They had to eat um, expensive food and, and, and the most fanciest water. And, and you know what? They died out anyway. So we, they killed the Haitian pigs, brought in American pigs. Those pigs died out and left Haiti with barely any pigs. So everything they do um, regarding Haiti, you know what I'm saying? They just always, you know, they just take crap on us. That's that what they're doing because Haiti has no government right now. They assassinated the president. And, and part of the reason why my book is called America's and France's A Thousand Year War Against Haiti, Assassination of a Nation, is because they assassinated our president. But they've been assassinating our character in the propaganda and the media, assassinating our, you know, constitution. General Toussaint Louverture and Gijard Dessalines both were a constitution, which was the first constitutions to ever say every person born 
on this land is free. No one is a slave. America wrote something like that in their constitution, you know what I'm saying, land of the free, but they ain't mean it. Haiti, we meant it. And it said no foreigners can own land in Haiti. You know what they did? During that 1915, well, I won't say 19, 1914, because the war really started in 1914, but from 1914 to 1934, at 20 years worth of occupation, they not only stole the gold, they took over all the ports, but they stole over 200,000 acres of land for American business interests. New York City Group. Thanks to New York City Group. Um, but anyway, it's King Kevin Dover in the building. Stay tuned for more. So please subscribe, like, and share this video. Please support the GoFundMe, KevinDover.com. If you, if, you, if you got no money, you don't think that a dollar or five dollars or twenty dollars is worth what I'm doing, what I'm leading, I'm not doing it myself, which I am leading, it's not worth it, then then just, just don't worry about anything I'm saying. Just keep moving. Keep looking away. Keep looking away at Haiti like everyone else is doing. But if you feel like what I've been doing, check my resume. Check my resume. I, I, I welcome anybody here who listened to this video today. Check my resume. Check the years I've dedicated to the community. You're talking about nearly 20 years. Years of volunteering, mentoring, um, uh, you know, helping with the different causes in Haiti, being in Haiti, uh, being here in America, the chess program. Google me. Look me up, KevinDorval.com. This, this you see my name? You see K-E-V-I-N-D-O-R-I-V-A-L. Look up Keaton Kevin Dorval. You will see that I'm, I'm not an armchair activist like, like my brother uh, Jamari would say. You know what I'm saying? Of uh, R.I. Pele movement. R.I. Pele movement. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate the support and allowing me on y'all show. Um, thank you. It would be remiss if I don't say thank you to uh, Madhu Bookstore up there in Greenbrier Mall. I'm going to have a book signing there in July. Um, also, shout out to Bob of the Juneteenth event, putting that together, allowing me to get on stage. Miss Wanda Walker, excuse me, Miss Wanda Walker, rest in peace. You know, I'll never forget you. Uh, thank you for the opportunities you've given me. You truly, truly, truly been a blessing to me and my family. Allow me, you know, starting that fire, that catalyst allowed me to be where I am today, you know, 10 years later up here in Atlanta. So anyway, blessings to y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed Juneteenth. Happy Father's Day to everybody. All, all the true kings out there holding it down, um, you know, being there for the community, being there for your children, protecting, providing, and doing what's needed to be done. Thank you all. And again, Talk to the people, all right? Bless up.